Hey everyone, welcome back to First Hand Globetrotting. If you're on the east coast of the United States and are looking for a calm, relaxing beach vacation where there never seem to be too many other people around and the sand stretches on forever, then I highly recommend the Outer Banks, North Carolina. I had heard so many good things about the Outer Banks before I went, and it completely met my expectations when I finally got the chance to take a trip there. But after a day of walking through the sand, and playing in the waves, and lounging by the beach, you're going to get hungry and will need to find something to eat. In this video, I'll show you some of the foods that you need to try when you're in the Outer Banks. These are foods that either originated here or are North Carolina specialties, so if you come all of the way to the Outer Banks, you should definitely check out these local dishes. Like with all of my other food videos, I'm going to focus mostly on the foods you should eat and less on which restaurants you should get them at. I find, especially in tourist spots, the quality of restaurants can change a lot between visits. They change staff, or change management, or change their menus, or even go out of business, so a place that was amazing one time ends up being terrible when I go back a year or two later. And another reason why it's hard to recommend restaurants in the Outer Banks is because it's such a big place. The distance from Kerala to Hatteras is nearly 100 miles, so even if I recommend a spot, it may be nowhere near where you're staying. Instead, I'll just show you the dishes. But these are all very popular foods in the Outer Banks, so you should be able to find them on a bunch of different restaurant menus. First up are Hatteras style crab cakes. Crab cakes are pretty common anywhere you go along the Atlantic coast of the United States, especially if you're a little further north in Maryland. But what Hatteras claims to be the difference with theirs is that they contain almost no filler, just crab meat, crab meat, and more crab meat. So you're pretty much getting as close to a pure crab cake as possible without everything just falling apart. I thought they were great, and I actually had them for dinner a few times while I was there. Second on my list is another dish named after Hatteras, Hatteras style clam chowder. You may be used to New England chowder with its cream base, or Manhattan with its tomato base, but this one has a clear broth. Nothing can really hide in there, so you'll be able to see all of the seafood and vegetables with every spoonful. I found the clear broth had a much lighter flavor than other clam chowders I've had, so it really brings out the flavor of the clams and the other ingredients. I'm a huge fan of seafood soups, and I really like trying this one. Next up is fresh seafood. The Outer Banks are some long, thin barrier islands, so you're never more than a few minutes from the ocean, which means lots of options for local catch. But you need to be careful, because while there are plenty of seafood restaurants, a lot of them just use frozen or imported fish that isn't from North Carolina. Usually, if a restaurant uses local seafood, they'll make it really obvious on their menu and be proud of it, often with a changing menu depending on what's available locally. My next recommendation is barbecue. American barbecue is pretty famous, but a lot of people don't realize how regional it is. North Carolina actually has two types of barbecue, with the Outer Banks being in the area where Eastern North Carolina barbecue is the most popular. It's whole hog pork barbecue that uses a sauce made up mostly of vinegar and peppers, which can be very different if you're used to tomato-based barbecue sauces. I've tried Eastern North Carolina barbecue at some places in other parts of the United States, and honestly, I wasn't a huge fan. But after having it here, it was so much better and shows why you really need to try foods in the places that they come from. My last recommendation is a drink. I'll admit, the first time someone told me I should try Cheerwine, I thought it was going to be some sort of alcoholic drink that brightens up your day but it's actually a pretty iconic cherry-flavored soda that they've been making in North Carolina for over a hundred years. The company that makes it only produces cheer wine and a few variants on the original, so they've stuck with what works for a really long time. Personally, I like cherry soda and thought cheer wine had a pretty good taste, so it was a nice change from the big-name sodas out there. 
So those are the five foods you need to try whenever you visit the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Three of them are Outer Banks specific, with the last two being more general North Carolina specialties. But I thought they were all really good, and if I go back to the Outer Banks, I'm definitely going to find restaurants where I can order them again. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about any of the foods I've shown you or my trip to the Outer Banks, ask me in the comments. While you're at it, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. On Instagram, I'm firsthand globe trotting. On Twitter, I'm firsthand globe. Follow me on there. And don't forget, it's an incredible world out there, so pick up your passport and do some firsthand globe trotting of your own.